What was the first dream that you chased, even before rap? What was what was your dream as a shorty? Uh, my dream, what I say as a show? My first dream, I could say like, real shit. My first dream was just like staying alive. Officially co-signing Meek Mills early. It's really good to see him like blossom into the artist he's becoming. I Meek mean, Mills is like the talk. He's in demand. Best. Hey, Lou, you always been cool. We always love you, man. Uh, Don't get like the other no wrongs, man. The hottest new nigga out. We on burst right now. This is where I'm from. This whole hood right here. You mix the noise. Any rapper too, I'm bad. Any rapper, you can't really better than me on nothing. Heralded in the streets. Loved in the clubs. And firmly embraced on the radio. Meek Mill launched himself into superstardom in 2012 with the flurry of hit singles. And then I say church, burn bitch, I let it burn bitch, my money straighter than the motherfucking perm bitch. Another acclaimed mixtape and a headlining tour. from Rick Ross's Maybach music group, Blue Chip MC, all culminates with the release of his anticipated debut, Dreams and Nightmares. Uh, this all, this all <laughs> right now. This <laughs> Tony Story Part 2, no pen, no pad flow, man. Besides this shit go down the head, that shit ain't got nothing on it. I'm gonna be the first nigga, besides Ho, man, put a, put a class here together. No pen, no pad, that's how we doing it. You been on a real hustle this year. Um, three tours, man. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> Tell me about the year in touring for me, man. Uh, touring was like very hard for me because I, I had to work on my album at the same time. And me, I got to sit down when I record. I got to go for days straight and just get in my zone. They had me just touring, doing radio. Like, like see, radio don't know. Like, you might do radio. You might have went to sleep 4 in the morning from the after party and you just did an hour set. Then you doing radio 8 in the morning. So if you ain't really up as you would really be, then you right back to a show. You're exhausted. You getting sick traveling city to city. It's just, it's hard. There ain't no game, man. It's not no game. Your voice got to, I scream. My voice is going out left and right. It's extremely hard work. Like, I had to fight my team for this time I got in the studio. Like, yo, the next tour, we ain't doing it unless they push it back. I need some time to focus on my album. If we got to have a classic, I want to be able to sit down and record my music like I've been recording because I think that's what some artists get lost at because, like, say they be hot and then just go cold because it's like, they trying a whole new method now, like, you know what I'm saying? When they was hot, they was in that studio all day going in. But now they popping, they, they out there on the road getting that show money, partying every night, living, going to the studio once a week now, and it ain't the same. You know what I'm saying? Things fall, people fall off. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, let's stick to my same strategy. When I was on house arrest, I was going there for a month when I made Dream Chasers 1. Or I was going to the studio for three months when I made Dream Chasers 2. Let me do the same thing with my debut album. Don't let me be recorded on the road 
different engineers, bullshit studios here and there, you know what I'm saying? Let me stay in my zone. And that's what people gotta know, man. Don't let these people throw you off and hey, you doing something totally different. That's why I push I push my album back. Don't think no the label ain't sound. I pushed it back. Everybody wanted me to drop. Everybody, my whole label, everybody. I'm like I'm not ready. I just came up with two tours. I barely recorded. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now I just did these three weeks in Miami. We always ready. So we in North Philly right now. I'm from the north part of Philly. Like around here. I used to live around here when I was like from like one to five. And then when I turned like eight, I moved around Bird Street area. Like we call that across the bridge over here. It's two sides of the bridge. My dad died when I was younger. Yeah. How was you and your father passed and how did he die? Uh, I was I was like, I always say five in my rest. You know, I remember, but I was really, I, I think I was four or some shit, four or three. And, uh, my dad, he died. My dad was vicious robbery boy, South Philly. You know, there's a lot, a lot going on. It was like a lot of clicks, gangs down South Philly, vicious robbery. And he died. I heard the story. It broke down. Uh, they went to go rob somebody. He had somebody that was with him, and the person he had with him wasn't really on the robbery type of shit. And when they got there, something, the nigga went in there, something. And he supposed to had got his gun took. And my dad and the nigga ended up getting a shootout. My dad got shot, and the nigga he was with got shot, and they both died at the same time. So it was like a middle of a robbery. He's trying to feed the family, the house. When I find a nigga that killed my daddy, no one will cry. I hope you hear me up and kill, nigga. So let me know that I don't feel, nigga. Hold up. You ripped my family apart and made my mama cry. So when I see you, nigga, it's going to be an homicide. Because I was only a child and you let me traumatize. You made me man in the house and it was quiet right time. Somebody did something to my dad, and like, you know what I'm saying? You, as a young it's a natural action. All you just do is you want to do something to them or, or fix the problem or somebody that fucked your whole family up, like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you be grow you grow angry as a kid. Like, you don't, you don't know what's happening, but you really know. Like, I, I went from getting, like, straight A's in school and... I ain't just dramatically start getting all else, but started changing slower and slower. Like, you know what I'm saying? Start from straight A's to total opposite. Not F's, I never got F's, but like D's and and C's and shit like that. I, I mm -hmm. never was the same again, you know what I'm saying? Moved to a different neighborhood, hanging around different people, you know? And had to adapt to different habitats. I rose from the jungle like Derek. Death to anybody that opposed my spare. My future looking brighter than this rose I'm staring at. We be running trains on the hoes, y'all chairs. I, I lived in the South Philly. My pop used to live with my side. All right, I'll be back. I'm going to South Philly and things like that. And then, you know, it turned to me. Start saying, that. all right, mom, I'll be back. See y'all later. I'm going to South Philly. You know, my mom's saying the same thing all over. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. In my mind, all I'm thinking is, I ain't letting nobody kill me down here. I ain't letting it go down like that. You know what I'm saying? Period. Battle me. Go ahead. Hype him up. I'm embarrassing. Moxburg. It is ass made of Bloody Mary. Johnny Blast with body bags. They try carrying. Meet Millie. I squeeze Millie's and got so try to run and they dump and they hit the back of him Hit his crown and spin him round, now he a tragedy You ain't a friend of me, nigga, you my enemy So I'm giving out shots like Hennessy What was the first dream that you chased, even before rap? What was what was your dream as a shorty? Uh, my dream, what I say as a show? My first dream, I could say like Real shit, my first dream was just like staying alive Really out there in the street You see a lot of people in Philly dying left and right my main thing was just like stay alive. I got locked up by a SWAT team. SWAT team. You ain't pulling out no gun on the SWAT team without no shots being fired. I think it's eight, nine of them that come in on the front line at one, and it was just me by myself. There's no way you pulling a gun out on the SWAT team. So they beat the shit out of me, took me in the house, beat the shit out of me. Like I had braids ripped out. I got the cut right here on my eye. 
I got uh, permanent handcuff marks, like cuts that last forever. Permanent handcuff marks that never go. Had a handcuff so tight, eyes look like elephant man. Shit fucked up. But he get on the stand or whatever. He young guy, like 28 or whatever. So yeah, you know, we came up. He pulled the gun out on me and, and started chasing me. I looked down the barrel of a 40 caliber and I feared for my life. I don't think I want to be a police officer no more. And I'm just looking at this dude like, that's crazy. And I, I make sure you put this part on here because you know, that happened to a lot of young kids out there. Like they lose their whole life to one person telling a lie. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just, me, I just happened to come up out of it. So he just saying all this stuff. I'm just looking at him like, this guy really crazy trying to take my life. Like, you know what I'm saying? The judge say, stand up, she about to sentence me. I stand up, getting ready, ain't no telling. 11 had the 23, followed by 11 had the 23. I was good, I, I was smiling. Like, not smiling, like laughing, but you know, like feeling good. Like I could do this and, and get back to my career. Talk about jail. What is that first night like, man, when you go in and you know you're going to be settled in there for a minute, man? Listen, you don't want to be there because when I before I went, people tell you jail ain't good, but they don't give you the details that the trays is trifling. Another inmate, they having food fights over your trays while they making the trays. The cells is trifling. I have rats, cockroaches running around. Every night you in a room the size of a bathroom in, in Philly, they got you sleeping in one cell with three people. They say it's illegal. You in a bathroom, the bathroom in there, you in there with three people for months straight, years straight, you know what I'm saying? And you gotta survive. You got you got to wash your drawers out with your hands, you know what I'm saying? You got to let a person you don't even know cut your head. You gotta sleep in a room with a with a stranger. Your first night in jail, you go in there with two other guys, you falling asleep around strangers. But the worst thing is when you wake up the first night in jail, when you wake up the next morning, like, damn, I'm really here and I can't go nowhere. Like, you can't leave. First night uh, when I came home from jail, it was a little radio station, Bad K Radio. Straight is on YouTube. Nappy braids, champion hoodie. Man, I'm fresh out of the county. I just got out last night. I still got the jail drinks in and all that, man. Meek Millie is back. 15 minutes on air, going ham. You know what I'm saying? Just hungry as ever. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's where I think I won that. When I came home, nobody in the city was hungry as me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody. Because I, had, I just had everything taken away from me. So now I'm back. I'm trying to get everything back. You know what I'm saying? And that's what just gave me at least start. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just turned it up and I, I took it to the next level. I have the voice of the South, the king of the South. And I have the voice of the city. Ladies and gentlemen, T.I. is in the building. Meek Mills is in the building. What's, what's happening, yes, Tim? Yeah, good? yeah, yeah. You what's know, poppin'? Uh, Grand Hustle 215 affiliated, man. You yes, know what sir. Yeah. Big things and some more things, man. Uh, when I met Tip, man, Tip, he, we was going through the same thing. So Tip was working on his album. So, you know, I was being the guy in the studio playing him, checking it out, just lounging around and boom. You know what I'm saying? Go in the other room, lay a few songs and... Tip, he liked my music, but he, he felt my vibe as a person. Tip, the first person let me push a phantom. Like, he was drinking, he was drinking, I think, uh, something like that. He was like, I was drinking, huh? You put, you got your license, right? I'm like, yeah, I got my license. Push the phantom. I'm like, dang, I'm really pushing the phantom right now. I'm out in Ollie, I'm out in Hollywood. So Tip talking, he's like, man, God working ways. You here for a reason. We landing, we, we, we got the same type of situations, and we fighting the same things, and I rock with you, man. I like how you carry yourself, this, that, and the third. So we always vibed out, but it was the time, and I got locked up. When I came home, Tip was locked up. When I came when I came back home, I mean, when Tip got out, I got locked up again. And then he got locked up again after I got locked up. So it was just crazy time. And then when he got locked up the last time, this, I'm on house arrest, getting shot at, all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Bound to catch a case, probation, being around certain people. 
So I'm like, I got to move now. When was the first time that you ever heard a Meek Mill record? I personally want to say that the day I met Meek was the first day I heard a Meek Mill record. But I got a few, you know, people in my organization who say, you know, they, they mentioned it a couple a couple times, but I had no prior knowledge of Meek Mill until I came in Philly on Teflon Dawn tour. Uh, Ross is in Philly, I seen him on Twitter. On, on Twitter, he was like, Philly, what's up? So I had a, a song called Rose Red. You know they call him, when they first start calling him Rose, Rose. I'm like, dang, I got this hot song out, man. You should jump on that, this Rose Red, just playing around. But you know, my whole my whole fan base retweeted it. About 20, 30,000 people retweeted that thing. So, you know, he starts seeing it, really. Like, when you can't go by your timeline and different people, I'm talking about really a lot of people retweeting it. Felt like 18,000 of them was just, Rose holla at Meek Mill, man. He just got out of jail, man. He the best rapper, man. He the, I'm like, man, this Twitter shit be halfway real. I say, cause damn, they won't stop. He couldn't ignore it, you know what I'm saying? So he up at the radio station with Kyle McKev at the radio station. And Kyle McKev must have was telling him, like, yeah, young boy, he got this on fire. There, the song is called Rose Red. The, one of the biggest records on the street. Rose, you need to, let me tell you, you need to be on that. Right, big records, you need to be on that. Well, it's safe to say somebody called me Neil. But he just spoke highly of him in, a, in another level, and I asked him, you know, I said, well, get him up here. So I called Meek, Meek, Ross is here right now. Get up here. Like, you need to come right now. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're getting your hair braided. That's when Meek had his brace. I said, stop. Like, just stop. Get in the car. Get up here. I came up. He like, yeah, man, I respect your move, and I see what you're doing, man. I'm going to jump on that. You know me. I'm just thinking. He talking, I don't know him at the time. You know, we exchanged numbers, and I told him I was gonna lace him. When I first flew down Miami with Rose, it was like we had that talk. Before we had that talk, man, we laid records. We laid records. We was dropping it. Uh, I went home for a day, came back with I'm a boss. He jumped on the first. We just shot two videos. And, uh, you know, we was rolling, you know what I'm saying? I could have stepped off. Once I did that, like 50, 50 wanted to sign me a little bit. Around the time Ross wanted to sign me, like it wasn't nothing that Ross was trying to, like no beef or nothing like that. He wanted to sign me, Rose, Akon. A lot of people was hollering at me at one time. So, you know, I actually had a chance to sit down with Ross and once I seen he laying joints with me, like left and right, like it ain't nothing. You know, I've been around a lot of rappers and, you know, they ain't really throwing them 16s around like that. So we laying joints, we done shot two videos, official joints. You know, I could run off right now at this point, you know, but me, the type of guy I'm in, I am, I'm a loyal guy, so once I seen that, I'm like, he in it to see me grow, like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody won't let you grow to the fullest. Pandemonium, shout out to Rose Wilder, you already know what we doing, man. We doing some niggas ain't doing out here, man, we making it go down. Live from MIA. Mr. Philadelphia is in the building. Seen this bitch causing pandemonium, you already know what it is. I already know. I talked to Ross, I was just like, yo, like now it ain't even really, first things first, I want to get clear that I'm trying to go right now, like the situation I, I'm in, like I'm on probation, I'm fresh out the hood, coming out of shootings, all types of shit, you know what I'm saying, I'm liable to die, get locked up, anything, so you know, I, I got to make a move like ASAP, like I'm, I, I want to go front line, like I'm ready to rap, and I'm ready to go, I didn't build it, put all that, you know, because when you get an artist, nine times out of ten, if they knew guys, you gotta build them up. I'm like, you know, I got the little groundwork or whatever. We throw a little more on top of that, but I'm ready to go within the next six months and get this money. He like, listen, 
I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. Let me show you what it is. Boom, I'm gonna get it. Let these niggas know too, man. This is the first day. I lay in the bill of rose. Look at Fuji, man. We come and get this motherfucker. Must be the bill. But we talk to you niggas. No, we talk to you niggas for real. You know what I'm saying? And they know we talk to you niggas for real. From a nigga coming from the bottom, man. Two years ago, this is my motherfucker said. I'm hoping I will get 20 years now. Get out. See that shit to the next level. You already me back, man. Next thing you know, we was dropping self-made videos out. What's happening? We oh, live right. on the set. Tupac back live in L.A. Self-made. The new album in stores now. God forgives the new joint on the way. We got Dream Chasers on the way with Meek Millie. Oh, thank you. Oh, man, you already know, man. We just, it's, it's, it's a motherfucking rap. It's a motherfucking rap. Tupac back, Meek Mill live in L.A. Self-made in stores. Meek Mill, talk to him. Let's get it. We know what we do, how we do it. MMG is in the building. You know what I mean? I rose eight and jumped on the bike, rode through the hood. Some shit 99% of you niggas wouldn't do. It ain't even it ain't even business. Just watching somebody dream come true. Yeah, real shit. So real tough. with the music, everything. All I'm just waiting for somebody to wake me up. And I'm back in my cell. I mean they'll wake up and I'm back in my cell, but I don't think they're gonna wake up from this dream right here. As the album is uh, constituted right now, you have an album with Mary J. Blige, Nas, Nas. Nas just told me he loved my music, he a fan. Dreams and nightmares, yo. Instant classic, he bringing that shit back, thank God. He bringing that shit back, baby. No, that's love. Trust that. No, good thing you too. So thanks for the love, that. too. I be seeing you showing love on the, I forgot what you was at, 106 or some shit. Yeah, oh, you then see I that shit? No, yeah. they be telling me, they be telling yeah. me on Twitter and shit. I be yeah. going yeah. I got to say the truth. They like, what you liking? I'm like, come on. You know what it is. Uh, Maybach Curtains, you know, that's just some classic real hip-hop music. You know what I'm saying? I got Nasir Jones on it. I got Rose on it. You know what I'm saying? John Legend and we just talking that talk. Tony story part two. It starts off with Pauly. Pauly just killed Tony. Tony was a wild guy in the hood. And Pauly killed Tony. Everybody respect him. And 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 now he got the work in. He 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 the guy with the money in the hood. Got all the chicks. His young boys all soldiers. They ready to ride. And Tony had a little brother that's 16. He getting with that. Pauly killed his brother. And you know he ready to ride on Pauly. And Pauly get with her, that young guy ready to ride. So. You know, it's all I wore. Treated like a treater, he got 30 in his nina. Seeing Polly God drop 30 in his beamer. Polly wore a nina when he heard it, steamer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Murder. Polly and stink. Addicted to the murder, Nana. How important is it for you for this album to come out as a classic? Uh, you know me, man. I never really even worry about that, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this one, when I dropped Dream Chaser 2, I ain't talking about I'm trying to do three million downloads in one day or none of that. It's just that this is what it is. That's why I'm working hard to put this fire music together. It ain't no other way. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. I don't even really think about it. When my label was putting pressure on me around the August at 28th, trying to do, I'm like, don't put no pressure. I never worry about that. When did I ever have a, since I've been signed to, yo, we ever have a problem getting a single out? We ever get have a problem with murdering these guys out here? So we ain't going to put no pressure and act like it is now. We just going to do it. You know what I'm saying? You just got to do it. Period. Like, you just got to stand up. Same when that judge say, stand up, it's time to get sentenced. Stand up, it's time to drop this album. You know what I'm saying? You got to get it.
What's Meek Mill gonna be like at 30 years old? Meek Mill gonna be mega rich, man. I, I, don't, I don't know if I would still be rapping if I if I get crazy. I'm, I'm gonna start rapping when I want to. The way this game designed, when I get 50 million or 100 million, I ain't doing what people say no more because this game they'll work you out till you burnt out and on to the next rapper. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna be getting this money. I already see my vision. I'm gonna be mega rich. My family gonna be right. My son gonna be set. I'ma have all his all his finances set for the rest of his life when he ready. And I'm just be living, you know what I'm saying?